Hey guys, welcome to another instalment of Two Men, One Cup. Uh, um, no, Two Men, No Hope. Sorry, that's another thing I'm doing. And, uh, <laughs> I'm Dan, welcome again, and with me as always is Jamie. Hello. Hello. Yeah, that's it. Back from his fucking holiday. Slag. Literally landed less than a couple of hours ago, and I'm, I'm here recording He's dedicated because he's going to stay up after this, edit it, and get it ready for our our Friday release. Uh, <laughs> release, yeah. <laughs> we've been going seven weeks, man. We've been doing fucking every Friday. Yeah, we. Uh, that is by far like a lot more than I managed to do with the previous podcast as well. <laughs> seven in a row, so we're doing well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, oh man, I cannot fuck it. I'm so happy to be. Uh, behind the mic again for everyone's knowledge we pre-record these so the last time we recorded last week's episode was actually bef- the week before that one so it's been two weeks since we've done an episode yeah yeah it's been two weeks since we've done an episode two weeks since we actually properly spoke to each other as well we've yeah. had the odd chit chat through message and stuff like that but it's not been Mate, I've been coming a, a part of the seams, man. This is like therapy. It's like one weekly session. I've missed one. <laughs> but it's a fucking crazy. But how was your holiday, man? It's fucking picturesque from all your photos. Yeah, I think I've been driving people mad with my photos on Facebook. <laughs> it, at, at first, it looked like you just took it out of a fucking magazine. <laughs> like you were sat somewhere in fucking Spain. You were like, oh, well, this looks nice pictures. I'm going to send these. Yeah, it was brilliant. I've never been to any of the Greek islands. And... Uh... I think it's definitely somewhere that I would like recommend to go. Like it started off a bit rocky. Like when we first landed, where did you go? Sorry, we went to Crete. Crete. Yeah. When we first sorry, when we, <laughs> when we first landed, I was like, "What is this place?" Because uh, um, the little woman on the passport desk was like. She was doing Mind Shark's passport. It took us ages to get to this desk, first of all, because they had no organisation, so it just all merged into a group of, like, 300 people. <laughs> so I was already losing my shit, because you know what I'm like when I'm hot? <laughs> I ain't had a cigarette in about 10 hours. <laughs> and I couldn't get a beer in Stansted, so I got half cut on the plane, yeah? <laughs> oh, mate, that must have cost you a fortune. You even got to the place yet. Oh, mate, I spent... I, I bought four vodkas and four Cokes on the plane little miniatures so that ended up being like yeah. eight drinks throughout the four hours i was like on a good level when i got off but then I was, how much did they cost you uh i think it was only 650 for like a miniature and a coke oh, that's not that bad. so it went too bad yeah, that's, that's normal right. price on that it's like london price isn't yeah. it <laughs> yeah, it's essentially a triple win it yeah oh yeah. um yeah and i was standing there and all these like people with kids and that were pushing ahead of us because they were allowed to go ahead for some reason because they've got children. And uh, I was already losing it because I was getting hot. And the woman was looking at the passport, looking at me. Then she just started looking over the top of my head. And I turned her, like it got to the point where I was turning around to see what she was looking at, innit? <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like sitting there as though nothing had gone wrong. And what I realised is she was waiting for someone to take her off for a break. And I was like, just, oh, Christ I was sake. like, just give me my passport and fuck off, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I was in a mood, and then uh, I come out into the like where you go to your buses and that. Mm-hmm. And I had a cigarette, and then I, I was pretty calm after that. And then we went and sat on the uh, coach. We normally get a private taxi because this holiday costs so much. We went for like a coach drop off. Yeah. Um. So we're sitting on the coach thinking there's going to be like 30 odd people getting on. There were six of us on this like 40 person coach. Oh, that's all so right. So we was like, yes. Yeah. So me and Charlotte like spread out. And then we was driving. The geezer just pulled up in the middle of the road and ran into what is like the Greek version of Halfords and started doing a <laughs> personal fucking shop in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's the problem you got though when there's less people and it's like oh do you do you want to just pull over? I need a Snickers. I just want to fucking run in there and go, oh, yeah, don't worry, man. There's no one on the bus. Fuck it. Matey, matey boy, literally, like, we were in the middle of the road. He left the engine running, yeah, jumped out of the bus, ran into there and got, like, a load of little bits for, like, for, like a car, like, a repair kit. Like, do you know, like, paint repair oh, kits? Sake. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then he got back in the bus and then he was on the phone like a crazy person the whole rest of the time and we were all up in these cliffs right up in the mountains yeah Mm -hmm. that's why it was so like picturesque but obviously being in a 40 person or however many seats are on this coach coming round cliff edges with no fucking edges on them like there's no (laughs) barriers mate you would be fucking yeah and i'm scared of heights yeah (laughs) and then charlotte's watching me and i'm like hanging off like the seats (laughs) as he comes around and he's like mental in it and he's going (laughs) and he's laughing to his little friend as he's going around the fucking corners i was just like brav are we gonna make it to this place so i was shitting it and then like obviously you do the whole thing where every hotel you pull up to you think oh hopefully it's not this shit hole Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there was a few sketchy ones before us. And then uh, when we pulled up to our one, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, I see a couple of your pose photos that you were doing. Oh, yeah. And that was with us avoiding the photographer. There was a photographer geezer. Every time I come downstairs for dinner, he was like, hello, sir. I was like, no, thank you. See you later. (laughs) As though I want to stand there in front of the fucking sea with Charlotte full body photos with all my fucking fat out shut it man fucking hell you're on holiday i was saying i was thinking i was sitting on the toilet where i do most of my thinking (laughs) and i was looking for my phone and i saw this thing where it says because obviously everyone knows we had brexit yeah yeah obviously there's been a lot of other things that's overshadowed it because brexit's a pile of shit anyway but so at the end of this year they're actually bringing in so before we could travel anywhere within the EU on like your driving license, couldn't we? You just I didn't know that. Could you? Yeah, yeah. You could go to France and Germany and all that, and all you needed was your your driving license. Oh, really? Because we're all part of the EU. Yeah. And then obviously it's like, well, Brexit's now. I don't even know what we are now. And uh, but now they're bringing in a visa system. So when you want to travel to parts of the uh, EU, not all of them. I think it was something like 20 certain places. You have to apply for a visa and it's cost it's going to cost you 7 euros. Oh mate, that's like fucking tur- Turkey's like that. Turkey already does that, man. They charge you like Yeah, 20 I had to euros. do it when I go to Canada. 20. Yeah. And we like I remember no one said a fucking word about it before I turned up there and then I'm in like the as usual having a meltdown in the airport. And um we went up to Turkish Customs and she was like, where's your visa? I was like, what visa? And she was like, you have to go over to that desk over there. And there was just like me and four other numpties that I didn't know about the visa in it. <laughs> just standing <there. laughs> See, when I went to Canada, I didn't know that was a new thing. And they wouldn't let me go on the plane. I was fucking shaking. Oh, man. And the guy's like, don't worry. He's like, calm down, calm down. We've got... Because luckily I was at the front of the queue. Yeah. He was like, stand here, and he took my phone, and he found the website, put it all in for me, and he goes, fill that out, and then I paid for it, it was something like 15 bucks, which is what, like 12, 13 yeah. pounds, and then it came back straight away saying it's successful, but it's funny, because I think that one lasts three years, where it says, um, successful applications, it's called E-T-I-A-S, uh, which stands for European Travel Information and Authorization System. Se- but it says it lasts seven. Uh, no, that's not right. It lasts ninety days. It's essentially a way to make us pay more because our government decided to leave the EU. Yeah, we're basically getting punished for it. I, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's so stupid because all you need is your passport, your email address, and your credit card. Throw that out there because that's the, they just want the money, right? Yeah. Like, we ain't got enough fucking problems in the UK. Now we've got to pay seven fucking euros to travel somewhere else. But you do a lot of travelling, so I thought I'd just throw yeah, it out there that, just to dampen your beautiful Between holiday. that and uh, <laughs> they do a thing as well like where it's like a holiday tax. 
when you go to countries as well and say if you, you they times it by like the star of your hotel the time you're staying and all this stuff and like when i arrived in uh crete they wanted 30 euros off me at the hotel straight away for the holiday tax that's hey, I would be like that. Nah. And I was like, why have they started doing this? Because all of them have started doing it. Because when I first it first happened to me, it was in Malta when I went with my whole family, and that was like two in the morning. I went in the mood to be listening to her telling me about fucking holiday tax. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. It was yeah. only two euros a day or something then, so I just paid it. But then every place I've been since then, you got that. So you're gonna have the holiday tax plus that seven quid to even get there. Yeah, they're going to be making loads of money off of us, mate. Yeah, yeah. Lucky I don't go. I only go to Canada. <laughs> so I'm alright. No, Daniel, we might end up in an all-inclusive hotel together. Fucking hell. not not after the last episode when we were talking about all-inclusive is not going to be all beer, uh, all oh, alcohol mate. for free. <laughs> the alcohol was unbelievable in this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I got like Fuck there was you. one night. Me, I think it was like the second night in. Me and Shark got absolutely smashed. Yeah. We were, we were playing mm-hmm. cards like blackjack, and we got absolutely wrecked. Just got carried away with the cards and stuff. We went back up to the room, and Charlotte was like, "Oh, I want to book a uh, a massage in for tomorrow." And she was like trying to talk me into it, and I was like, "Okay, nah." Oh, mate. And because I was drunk, I said, "I don't want a person touching me because I don't want to unleash my body onto them, and I don't want them to have to touch me because it would make me feel weird." Yeah. Yeah, and um, I was like, I'll do a facial massage, and this was all agreed for the next morning. So then the next morning, I woke up and I was absolutely hungover. I like when I'm hungover as well. I like actually stink of alcohol, even though I've showered, brushed my teeth, everything. It just like seems to come through my pores. So I was, <laughs> I was like absolutely um, scared that she's. This woman is right up in my mouth, right up near my face. Mm-hmm. And um, I was thinking, she's just going to smell alcohol off me the whole time. So then, like, when I first... I've never done... Have you ever done a spa? No, I don't. I don't... I don't even go to the hairdressers. I get my mum to cut my hair. <laughs> I don't like the thought of someone <laughs> running their hands. I don't... I, I'm considering I'm quite a sexual guy. Yeah, I think you then are getting want... banned. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd have a boner, Full actually, yeah. Right? Man, woman, it doesn't matter what it is. I'll be fucking poking up. I walked in, yeah, and they did us both in the same room. <laughs> and all the lights were off, isn't it? And they was like, take your shoes off. And then Charlotte had to get naked. Or oh, or just to her end. underwear. Because she was getting a full body massage. And I was uh, just had to take my shoes off. But because the lights were off, I was completely thrown off in it. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, Charlotte, it's pitch black in here. Where am I supposed to put my shoes? She was like, just put them over there by the, that dim light and there's like well music going on in the background and i'm just like it's like you've let an orangutan into a fucking like civilized uh situation and i'm just like walking around the room <laughs> then i pick up the towel that's supposed to go over the top of me yeah and i just bung it on the floor because mm-hmm. i was like what well, is that on the bed so i just threw that <laughs> and then she come in and i'm laying there and i like late i was like really conscious about breathing in it yeah and yeah. um she come in and there was like this round thing she put that underneath my legs and said it's not good for me to lay straight and i was like okay and <laughs> and then um she was doing all of the mas- massaging and all this stuff she put the towel over me that i threw on the floor um she's doing all the massaging and then she told me to stop frowning because i was like really when someone touches my face i'm like really like i scrunch my face up and she was like, please stop frowning. Like, it's not helping me uh, with the massage. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, just laying there. And I was thinking, do not breathe on her. Because all you do is smell of alcohol in it. And I was just like, laying there, trying not to breathe. And then every time that she went off and got the oil, I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> so like you're fucking whacking yeah. off and she turns and around. And when I come out. <laughs> Because I I finished in like half an hour. Charlotte had an hour in it, so I went back to the room and started to fall asleep again. And mm. Charlotte was like, "Why were you breathing like that in there? Was she getting turned on or something?" And I was like, "No, Charlotte, I was trying not to breathe." <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're fucking frowning. You're holding your breath. 
She's I like, was going please, purple. sir, can you breathe? You're going blue, yeah. She's like, please stop frowning. <laughs> it was like, they're nice long, uh, they stay every, really long in it, like, hello. I was like, mate, this this is not Oh, yeah, it's supposed to be relaxing. No, nah, fuck that, man. I, on the other hand, went to uh, that girl that I've been seeing. I was like, oh, let's go out for something to eat. So we planned, because she lives in a little village. Yeah. And I was like, oh, where's like a local sort of like pub? I love like a local pub, man. It has that sort of smell. Like a... Uh, so we went to this... Like a nice local pub or like an old man pub? No, well, I suppose it was a bit of both. It was called the Red Lion. I'm not going to say the name of the village because I'll just fucking ruin it because it's yeah. Scottish. But like you go in and it's got like the really low ceilings and they went in and they went and sat us down in this bit. There was like no one in there yet. And they, I think it was the owner came over and he was like, oh, how you how you doing? And she was like, oh, have you got any local beers? All right. And he was like, oh, yeah, we've, we've got one. The guy makes it just up the road. Mm. So I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, we'll have two of them. And it was actually blinding. It was called the um, the Brew Shed. We found them on Instagram while we were sitting there. Brew Shed. Okay, Googling it. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely well good, and the food was really good as well. I had a haggis burrito. Ooh. Oh, mate, fucking yeah! So it's a, it's a bit it. more than an old, like an old man pub if they're doing stuff like that. Yeah, there was like a bar bit where there was like people sitting, but it was like a, a restaurant. But no, it was really good. And then we went back and watched a movie, and she fell asleep. <laughs> as they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like working through the food, and then she woke up, and I hurt my stomach again. From all the, the thrusting. Oh. I, I'm going to have to go to the doctors, man. I'm in fucking pain. Like, I'll stand, I'll be standing at work. Yeah. And uh, and then all of a sudden, I'll just be like, I need to go to the toilet. And I'll just run. And then I'll get there and, it, and I won't do anything. Because it's just, it's your muscles, isn't it? Mm. Your stomach. It's your, core, it's your core muscles, isn't it? I hope that's what it is. But, I think it yeah, most likely so is. I think what it is, is you haven't been working on them for a while because of the celibacy oh god no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then she's the heavens have yeah. opened and she's walked out and then and now it's been like they haven't had time to have, but she's going on holiday so i won't get to see her for like a week and a half two weeks so hopefully i'll heal and then as soon as she gets back i'll fuck her again <laughs> That's got to be hard, uh, right at the beginning, uh, going on holiday for a bit, and then you're you're having to go back into the drought for that week and a half. Oh, I'm dying. Yeah. I'm actually dying. She's getting a lot of dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm bounced off the walls here, and she's like, I'm going on holiday. I'm like, if you just send the silhouettes of your dick, and then put some like, <laughs> like carbon music over the top of it, innit, until it's a new sort of therapy for you. <laughs> <laughs> silhouette yeah dicks. silhouette dicks different but, um, positions but yeah but yeah so because of that being back on the cell of, I can't even say that word that's why I messaged you and I was like oh man I really want to hear from what's going on with the podcast and that and I was really actually that's what kept me going when you were sending me pictures of all the DMs that we were getting like screenshots stuff. yeah of DMs so I wanted to appreciate everyone that messages in and gives us feedback and that because it gives you that boost especially for me and when i get up in the morning oh you know mate i, mean? I was not message. expecting like when i put the original post out there to try and get like some honest feedback on how they think the show was going i was not expecting half of what we got and like a lot of people said they'll carry on listening a lot of people give us like tips on la like the amount of swearing we do and stuff like that i thought it was like really everything was really positive the, we didn't get anything negative really no no not at all and everyone keeps saying about our friendship yeah which is getting to the point now i think they're gonna think we're sort of like lovers or something <laughs> who knows you know Dan? I, mean? I, could, I, could... <laughs> I was gonna i was originally gonna sit here and um because i watched the, have you seen the sweeney yeah with, um, what's his name? Ro is it Roy or Ray? Ray Winston? Winston and Plan B, the rapper. Ray Winston. Plan B, yeah. So I was just going to sit here for the whole episode going, Jamie, slag. <laughs> you slag, Jamie. Don't be bugging me off, Jamie, you slag. <laughs> you dirty little slag. <laughs> you dirty slag. Don't you talk to me like that, you slag. Ray Winston's fell off lately, <laughs> isn't it? I suppose he's getting older, but I ain't seen him in nothing in years. 
he is getting older, but he does some quality fucking theories. But um, but yeah, then we had an email from another from someone else, so that completely changed my slags. So everyone <laughs> is gonna have to deal with it because we've been getting a lot of emails from like Americans and Canadians. Yeah, yeah, I mean I, that was really surprising. So I thought I was gonna, I thought I was, I give him a Scottish joke as well. My favourite one that I heard on the radio. It goes, uh, Jamie, did you know that Mickey Mouse has got a helicopter? Helicopter. Yeah, at Disneyland. <laughs> 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 Fucking class. So, for a record in Scotland, Disney, if you say it right, it means doesn't. Yeah. Disneyland. That's, my, land. that's my dad's favourite <laughs> word, isn't it? Because he's from Scotland. Disney, yeah. Or oh, Dinny. Dinny Ken. <laughs> means I don't know. Oh, Dinny yeah. Ken, yeah. I love Dinny Ken. And um, get to fuck is a good one as well. <laughs> get to fuck, I love it. Ken's a great word as well because it means like ten different things if you say it rightly and put it yeah. in the right way. Like my dad says, because obviously um, in Luton it's a it's a known thing that we all say. Do you know what I mean? All the time. That's like something that comes out oh, yeah. every sentence. I was about to say it then, and. <laughs> <laughs> My my dad, because he's lived in Luton so long, dad now uses Ken as that. So he'll be talking to you and he goes, Ken, like that. As though, like, do you know what, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's basically the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> I like the way the Scottish say, um, they use how instead of why. Yeah, that you. I had a Scottish so the, girlfriend for a while, how? didn't I? That used to confuse the fuck out of me when that happened. Because she yeah. oh, we'll be mid row and she'd be like, how? And I'd be like, what do you mean, how? <laughs> She's like, how did you do that? No, I I was like, and I was like, what do you mean, how did I do that? It's not, you mean, why did I do that? No, it's yeah, how. So, oh, yeah, oh, mate, it's all backwards. <laughs> it's all backwards. <laughs> I fucking love it, though. But yeah, so I've gone on the thing again. So there was, um, there was a guy on Facebook that we wanted to give a shout out to because I've we thought his message was really funny. What was his name? Oh, again? David Rogers. I've, let me just double check. Yeah. I think it's David Rogers. I, I've been chatting to him quite a bit, actually. He's a re- Do you want to read out the first message he sent? Because I thought it was yeah, quite funny. Yeah, his very first one. Good evening um, in the States. I decided to sam- sample Burger Nightmares and have a few thoughts on it. Um, he went on to say how he thought that two people with a lot of history sharing stories, discussing the world always seems to work out and there's no shortage of material which i think is something we haven't struggled with yet is it getting material no um i think we've done a lot of shit (laughs) then he went on to say about which i think was quite funny um how he's working on trying to kick kick the porn habit as well um yeah i feel the pain (laughs) i feel the pain he said that it's like this is a hill that i keep sliding down backwards (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's all that lube yeah and he also mentioned Galgan, no traction the actual um duck program that i was trying to get you to watch that i couldn't find a reference to he says it's on it's called raw on apple tv raw okay yeah, i have to look, have to that look up. it up i've completely forgot about that yeah. duck thing yeah the porn addict the porn addiction is coming back i it would i hadn't looked at any porn until i hit like four or five days of not seeing that girl <laughs> and now i'm just fucking off the rails that's why she's getting so many pictures because i'm just like and i was sitting in my car today and i was like i need to see some tits before i go in i need to see some tits before i go in on twitter flicking through fucking <laughs> like a oh, fucking crack it's terrible man <laughs> yeah i know it's terrible isn't it like i just can't get through the day without it <laughs> but yeah no so i appreciate you messaging man and uh if you got anything you want to talk about or anything you know Obviously, if you're talking to Jamie already... Yeah, he's, he said he's got quite a few stories and stuff for us to put forward, if we ever wanted to. So. Yes, yeah, so we're happy to hear him, man. We'll, we'll put him out yeah. there, see if anyone else is interested. But we um, we also had one from which we, <clears throat> we're pretty sure this... Uh, we're not going to say this guy's name. We're going to keep him anonymous, but I'm pretty sure he messaged us on Facebook and then sent us an email yeah. as well. So... I keep going to say his name. But I'm not... <laughs> the Canadian listener. That's what we're calling him. The Canadian the listener. Canadian. <laughs> yeah, so he says... Yeah, the Canadian. 
So he says he works in a, a factory, a cereal factory. People, if you email in, you can't just say cereal. I need some context here I, now because now I want to know what cereal. Well, I assumed it was like love- with us, we've got like Kellogg's over here, innit? I thought it would be like a Kellogg's. You, you're making all kinds of all kinds of shit. Oh, yeah, see, so, yeah, but I love me some Lucky Charms, man. If this guy works in a Lucky Charms factory, oh, I'm that's what you're off. trying to do, Dan. That's what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> but um. But he says he works with one of the laziest people he's ever met. And this is what I'm going to steal this phrase because this sentence, I, I got this email. I go to work at like six o'clock in the morning. So I woke up about five o'clock and I got this email and it said, this guy will fuck the dog for 12 <laughs> hours and then point his finger at everyone else for the shit work. <laughs> I've never heard that phrase. I before. That was brilliant. This guy will fuck the yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> but he says um he has seniority over him uh but he basically runs the area which we know yes what that's like and uh because he's the only one willing to pick up the slack and he also said the ass hat is infecting others with his bullshit and i use ass hat quite a lot i quite enjoy that one so i appreciate that as well and he's and he <clears throat> he says look he's lazy too and I only want to do the bare minimum, but now he's got to do the bare minimum of three people's jobs just to get the the line moving. Yeah. So he want he says, "Do we have any suggestions?" He's like, "I've tried hitting him with bags of cereal, dumping a garbage pail full of fines from three stories up on his head while he hangs about on Facebook instead of being on the line, bullying him about his giant truck and muscles being a distraction from his small cock." <laughs> <laughs> any good ideas of making him feel small so he tries harder or pranks to pull on him to get him working again he says he's promised he's not a monster but I'm pretty sure we are so it's fine <laughs> so uh, of course it goes without saying in work bullying is a big no you don't want to bully anyone but I think what uh, people like that just bring it on yeah, you know I mean, if they're gonna piss about, I think <laughs> I think there's a lot you could do before it becomes uh, like a bullying situation. Do you know what I mean, I think pranking them and doing stuff like that would be funny, and it might be the right way to get them to do something right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think you got to be careful though, because if this person's above you, d- then if he has too much, if he's had enough, depends you know how much mean? of a little bitch he is as well. To be honest. Well, yeah, you see he's got a big truck of muscles. I can just some picture the Canadian, like, skin. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, my God, it's a typical sort of guy. No, I, like, I've come but, across um, a lot of people like that in the past, and it's like, I used to, where, where I used to work before, I had a few of them that used to work below me, and, like, the manager knows, do you know what I mean? The manager knows who the lazy fuckers are and who... Th- even if they will never admit it, they do know who the people are that not put, that's not put in their weight. So yeah. it might even be a point of just embarrassing the uh, guy in front of the manager to like highlight it, so it, it's a little bit embarrassing for that guy. And then that might, because obviously pranking him and trying to take the piss out of him is not working. So try do a little humiliation, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think to myself as well, especially where I'm working at the minute, because I had a massive blowout with my superior. Yeah. Because I was doing the same. I was working my ass off. And because I was working my ass off, he felt like he could, instead of talking to the people that would give him sass, go to me and be like, oh, can you do that? Can you do that? And then in the end, I just fucking exploded at him. And now he put me where I want to be. He won't come and move me anywhere else so i've i've you know bagged it not saying you should go up to him and have a blowout i'm just saying that's that worked out for me yeah yeah but i used to do a thing where you know you knew me early on dan when when i used to come in on the late shift and if i thought the morning shift ain't done enough i'd be walking around the whole fucking place kicking <laughs> yeah, off. like slamming shit <laughs> <laughs> and that... <laughs> 
and I used to get, I used to get myself into such like a temper over it as yeah. well that I genuinely believed there was nothing, no one, no one was doing any better than me. And why am I having to deal with these people? And I, I, I would make it very apparent to everyone that I was pissed off, mm-hmm. and that didn't work. It did. That's not where work. I was going. With my point. My sorry, my brains. Yeah. yeah. So when you got problems like that, the best thing to do is find something to distract you, right? Some something that makes you happy, that gets you through the day, like the podcast at the minute, mm. which as I said, getting the the message from people helps me focus on something else. Because yeah, at the yeah. end of the day, it's working in a factory fucking sucks man you're in a fucking tin box it's either going to be too hot or it's going to be too cold people are getting pissed off with each other it's just that and especially not saying that because we have women at our work but when you get that amount of men together they're just clowns man you know what i mean the amount of like people like grabbing your nipples there's a guy that walks past me to, i'm a butcher by the way <laughs> Grab, yeah so no this guy yeah he, he doesn't speak any english he's polish it's, he he speaks with like sign language. It's fuck. It's trying to see him order some toast is the funniest fucking thing in the world. But he walks past me to go shop <laughs> his knife, and he fucking runs his hand through my ass like it's a fucking credit card. And what I can't even say nothing to him because he doesn't understand what I'm saying. So no, yeah, he was shopping. You, I think you were oh, getting harassed. The guy said to me, "He's like, mate, that's sexual harassment." I was like, "I know it is." What do I do? He doesn't know what I'm saying. So he's like, sh- he did it to me today, and he's sharpened his knife. So I get this big fucking bit of fat that come off the fucking, uh, and it's like really thick. And he's obviously got his back to me, and I just fucking wing it off the top of his head, just fucking clap him, and obviously he skips and fucking busts his knife, doesn't he? <laughs> it's got like a big old dent in it. And he turns around and he says something in Polish, and I'm like fucking doing sign language of you're a cunt. I was just like, maybe it feels so good just to wing that bit of fat off his fucking head. But yeah, that's what you get. You maybe know. you're a bit. Of, maybe you're a bit of him, Dan. Oh, mate, he loves it though. I've got my steel and jammed it right up his fucking ass, and he just fucking turns. Ugh. But that's what you get. Yeah, you know I mean, a, a, a factory full of of men that are apparently homophobic, wiping your ass. <laughs> See, I get. Um, mine's a little bit different because we don't really have like a continuous line. So I ha- like I wait on someone to pass me something but they could have already done it the day before oh okay I mean. yeah, yeah so i'll be like i'll have a like a batch of things that i work on and, and then i don't have to worry about anything else for the rest of the day or i'll come in and there's nothing been done because that's someone's not been over the in and over the weekend and done overtime and there's fuck all there in the morning and i just stand there looking at my boss my boss is standing there looking at me <laughs> And I'm just like, okay, I'll go and take some temperature checks, Nick, because I'm not, I'm not going to be <laughs> made out as I'm doing fuck all in it. But at the same time, I'm not going to do anything if there's nothing there for me to do. Oh, fucking <laughs> hell. So yeah, so I was trying to think of things you can do to this guy, but without knowing, like you said, like, your factory is different to mine, right? So it's, I can imagine his is more similar to mine. I can imagine it's a line. I would say so, yeah, yeah. But um, I just couldn't get over the big, the giant truck of muscles and I was thinking to myself I bet he's the kind of knobhead that comes to work and brings his fucking protein powder or like his his uh, pre-workout with him and leaves it in the canteen and he comes mm. in he takes his little shot shaking his fucking shaker and I was like wouldn't it be great if you could put some laxatives in there like powder or laxative up because you wouldn't think that would you like are oh, you taking your protein workout you always take and all of a sudden you're shitting. It would take him at least three more goes of that before he realises that's what's making him run to the toilet. Could you imagine? Yeah, if, he, if he's if he got pre-workout, you've got to take that 15 minutes before you go to the gym. So, like, can you imagine he's just, <laughs> he just sit down, he, there's all these fit women in fucking leggings all over the place, and he's running, clutch, clutching his arsehole as he's running to the fucking toilet mm. trying to fucking... Oh, mate, that'd be genius. Best thing ever. <laughs> That's a good idea, to be fair. That that's very much like Jim out of the office idea, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to think of something that is isn't gonna be isn't gonna affect the work, yeah. but it's gonna make him think twice. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like what I was bit. thinking was because I do this a lot. Like, if I realise like people are fucking about and all that, I start going on the wind up. And I'll be like, oh, like, because say if the big boss come in earlier on 
where ninety percent of the time, when a big boss walks in, everyone fucks off on their break because we can take our breaks whenever. So everyone yeah. just walks because we work in the clean room. As the big boss walks in, everyone's to go walking out past them out of the change room and fucking off out the door. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but um, me and another guy had one guy going for about a day and a half, and then we had him going so long that we forgot. That we were pranking him, yeah. And he was just sitting in the other room shitting himself for about uh, a day and a half. <laughs> and he wouldn't leave the clean room. Because when uh, the big boss come in, he he did the usual thing and fucked off. And then we were like, oh, uh, boss man was looking for you. And was wondering why you're never in the clean room when he comes in. And he just shat himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's like you being serious and then me and the other guy were like yeah 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 we're being serious like like he's he's really questioning your motives and all this stuff yeah and like, i had him really like worried about it and he never left the clean room for the rest of the shift we totally forgot about it and he come to us later on and he was like are you serious about that and i was like no nah, mate we're joking mate we're joking but doing stuff like that i think makes people think in it because no matter how lazy people are they never want people to think they're lazy. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah, management. Especially when it's like higher management. Higher up. So, just play a little, few little mind games with him, and see if it works. If not, he's just thick as fuck, and I wouldn't even worry about him. That's what I mean. You got to try and think of something that is just going to get you through yeah. the day. Yeah, you know I mean, just keeps your mind occupied. That you got something to look forward to, and then just get through it, man. But like in my work, it's more physical. I think because it's so noisy. So, like, if you go to the toilet, you'll come back and you've got, like, all your chain mail has been, like, cable tied together. (laughs) (laughs) We actually managed to, um, we had the line had broken down. And I think it was that guy again, the one that doesn't speak English. Because he's, they call him um, Wussy, which I think is something like bald in, in, uh, in Russian or something. Or Polish, yeah. And uh, and they make like sheep noises because they say he's a sheep shagger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cause he understands noises. So yeah, so he's like talking to someone and someone behind him and and cable tied his sleeve and his uh, chest piece together. <laughs> so when it came to him going to the break, he couldn't take it off. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like but like he tried to take the body off and obviously the arms attached so he's got like his arm up with the the body piece over his head and he can't get his arm out of the sleeve and everyone's just wetting themselves <laughs> and he doesn't know what's going on man it's so funny it's one of the because all the managers join in like that's what i was saying about lads all in a place yeah. together but one of the supervisors went out into the change rooms and he put super glue in one of the guys uh lockers all his lunch was in there he super glued his lock and he'd come out and he tried to open it and he had to go upstairs and bolt cutter it off and we were all like pissing up going off for our lunch and he's like I can't get into my locker man <laughs> I love it the best thing is though is because um, we, we do all loads of because we trim the fat off the meat yeah. if you get like a really thick bit you can shape it with like the heat of your hands and the amount of times you see someone walking along and they've got like a mini fat a mini penis made out of fat stuck on their head <laughs> and they don't know and everyone's going like oh did you see him did you see him and he's just wandering along <laughs> <laughs> you don't know it's like a dick on his head <laughs> that's fucking brilliant just makes you laugh at all the managers do it to each other as well that's a good, it sounds like a good culture you've got there isn't it like everyone's having a little bit of a laugh and a joke it's all right when the uh the lines move in but when it starts like Stopping and oh, starting yeah. and then piles it's the same up. With everywhere though, the fucking when the problems start, man. Yeah, everyone's attitude. There's all changed. like <clears throat> it used to in my old, in uh, co-op in the old days. You used to have the best relationship with your fucking manager, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then because obviously I was the manager of the store, and then I had a manager. As soon as anything went wrong in the store, he'd be like, "Right, that's it." what's happened you're the yeah. worst person that's ever been in charge of anything in the entire life and you feel like a tiny little piece of shit and i'll just yeah. be like go home at night and i'd, I'd be believing all the shit they tell me because i was that yeah. naive at the time 
and then when you get older and you start to realise that work is just work and stops taking life so seriously, it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's just like when um, I remember, you, I don't remember if you was working at the Stopsy then, but it was when I was in charge. I went up to because you knew what I was like. We used to go and every time kids were causing trouble, I'd go and start a row. And um, I went up to the roof, and there was loads of kids smoking weed on the roof. No, I don't and I remember. I told them to get down, yeah. And then when I come down into the store, I walked out into the warehouse. The whole fucking warehouse was flooded with water. Where one of them had lent on the overflow cap on the bloody water uh, thing on top of the roof. So yeah. obviously, once they lent on that overflow opened the valve it just kept pouring out and it was pouring straight oh, into the yeah. electricity cupboard yeah oh wait no i do think i remember that yeah it must have been around the same time because i left before you yeah, yeah and um it was pouring straight into the electricity cupboard so i shut the i shut the electric off called up yeah. um who do i need to call oh you have to call them and then they call someone no, I had to get someone there as an emergency service. Oh, I had a... Um, I didn't turn the electric off myself because I couldn't find where the electric... Because obviously it was just such an old building, wasn't it? I couldn't yeah, find yeah. like the consumer unit and stuff. So I had to get the fire brigade out. And the fire brigade come out and turned it off and shut the whole store and shut the whole road down, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and all I remember is getting a phone call. I was on the roof, yeah, talking to a fireman. As he's just told me, I've saved people's lives because obviously it could have been an electrical fire because it was going into the electrical cupboard. And um, I had a phone call from the fucking area manager and he's like, I can't believe you shut the store. Is there still customers inside? I was like, no, I've cleared everyone out. And he was like, you can't close the store. You have to try and reopen. And I was like... I was like, I can't reopen. The whole place has started to flood. Like, it was even going onto the shop floor. Yeah. I was like, if I turn the electric on, it's going to short out and it'll be live. And he was like, okay, I'll be there in 20 minutes. And I was just like, fucking hell, what does he want? What what, what help is he going to be? Yeah. Is he going to go tell the fireman that they've got to turn the yeah, power Yeah, exactly. On? And the fireman, they're telling me that I'm lucky that I t got, got it turned off when I did because it was going straight into the bloody mains. And um, fucking management. Man. One another thing from that day, uh, customers being idiots. Yeah, the electric is off in the building. There's no electric. There's no lights. There's nothing. There's no light in the whole in the whole shop. They're still shopping, Dan. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, like you could yeah. use the tills with there's no power. No, like, there's no powers in the tills, and there's women standing there and guys standing there going, "Oh, what." Can you not just give me it? I'll just give you the cash. You, can you not just give me it? I'm like, no. Get out of the shop. The fire <laughs> alarm is going off. Get out of the shop. <laughs> I'd be like that though. Like my my brain only works in like one line. <laughs> so for like if I'm going to like get something and then something goes wrong, I'm like, but I'm here to <laughs> to buy it. Yeah, but it, you, you can't get it. But I've I've come all this way. <laughs> like, you fucking do it. I was I was told a story um yesterday and I can't I wasn't sure whether it was technically classed as a prank, but I thought I'd tell it anyway because it made me laugh. So there's this there's this crazy bloke at work. Um we call him crazy whatever, but I can't say his name. And um he lives in these block of flats. Mm. So He's, he lives in a block of flats and obviously you get like a communal garden and he has a spot that he goes and he sits out when it's nice weather and he reads his book. Right. So he goes out at the weekend. I don't think it was recent. I think it was like a couple of months ago. He goes out to read his book and there's like um, dog shit in front of him. And he's like, oh, that's weird. Like, why has no one picked it up? So he goes around all of the part, this all of the, the flats knocking on the doors going, oh, have you got a dog? Blah, blah, blah. And there's only one person in the entire building that's got a dog. So he knocks on the door and he's like, oh, I think your dog did his business out there and you didn't clean yeah. it up. And he's like, nah, it's not my dog. And he's like, well, you're the only one with a dog. 
Yeah, nah, not my dog. <laughs> so he goes, whatever. He's like, pick it up. If it's your dog, pick it up next yeah. time. So he goes down, he throws it away himself. So he comes back the next day, there's dog shit on the floor again. <laughs> so he goes up, he knocks on the guy's door, and he's like, come on, man. Like This guy's Polish, by the way. I'm not doing an accent, but he's Polish. He's like, come on, man. You've done it again. He's like, it's not my dog. He's like, stop saying it's not your dog. Obviously, it's your dog. You've only one with a dog. It's not my dog. So he goes down, he puts it up, and he puts it in a dog bag, and then he pushes it through the guy's letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes back on with his day and this he comes back mental. yeah yeah he comes back and the dog shit's there again the next day <laughs> the guy's just going back and taking the... so he goes up to the guy's house it goes up it goes around the outside because he's on the ground floor goes out in front of the guy's window drops his trousers on the busy highway <laughs> and just takes his shit right out front of this guy's house <laughs> 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 just drops a brick right there in the fucking Jesus busy road Jesus Christ <laughs> I just like it leads, him, leads him to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that resolved it or anything like that, but that's as much as the information I've got because the guy was proud of it. He was telling everyone in the factory, I took a shit out. Got he is a house. fucking nutcase, Dan. He needs to be locked up. <laughs> then, yes, uh, Tuesday, he got lifted by the police out front of the factory. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, please let it be because he took a shit in public. <laughs> so I found out today he come in and he's like, oh, please, uh, you know, let me explain. And, and the manager's like, oh, no, if, if you're able to come back to work, then it's your business. Don't worry about it. And he's like, no, 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 let me explain. So he, obviously I said he's yeah. Polish. So he's in Poland um, with his wife and their mate um, driving wherever they were driving. And all of a sudden this car goes in front of him and pushes him off the road what the fuck? and he's like what the fuck's going yeah. on and these three guys get out one smashes the window and puts a gun to his head fucking and he's like hand. he's like give me the keys to your car the other two get the women out of the car and they're like see that direction fucking start walking don't turn around so they walk off leave him in the car with these three guys the guy takes him out. They they tie him to a tree, and steal his car. What the fuck! <laughs> and he's left there for two days tied to this tree. <laughs> <laughs> when he finally gets rescued, he's got uh, hostage insurance, so he claims the money back for the stolen car. No way. And then, a few years later, um, the insurance company's like, "Ah." Oh, we should never have paid you that money. He was like, I was tied to a tree for two days. Yeah. I'm not paying you that money back. And they're like, nah, 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 you owe, that stuff. You owe us that money. So he's in, he moved to France for work and they lifted him in France and he explains what happened to the police, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, you know, I understand what's happening. Don't worry about it. We don't want to get involved. Obviously this happened. We've got a report of it happening. Don't worry about it. And then he moves here and the insurance is still going for it. So now he's been lifted here for the same problem. That's fucking madness. Because man. the insurance company are flagging it. Yeah, it's mental, isn't it? But what made me laugh, and I don't know if anyone else picked this up because you didn't, the two women were told to walk away and then he was left twice to retreat for two days. <laughs> his wife... Well, they just assume he died or something. <laughs> his wife left him tied to a tree for two days. Didn't go... Oh, you know what? It's been 20 minutes. We'll turn around and yeah. go back and find him. Now, nah, they're having a fucking party, in there. We'll go to the police, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they left into a tree. I wouldn't trust my wife if she's leaving. Like, could you imagine coming home and she's like, uh, Dan, you haven't done the washing up? Uh, well, love, do you remember when you left me tied to a tree for two days? <laughs> I ain't doing the fucking washing up, love. You're doing it, ain't ya? If Charlotte left me tied to a tree <laughs> for two days, yeah. I'd be on such a moral high ground for the rest of my fucking life, Dan. That I, I would be unbearable to live with. I would be unbearable to live <laughs> exactly, with. Yeah. She'd be like, you're going to do this? I'd be like, do what? Yeah. Uh, uh, do you want to tie me to a tree as well? Do you want to leave me there for another two days? You do it. I was like, do you know how long 48 hours is, Charlotte? Well, let me just fucking tell you how many times I've shat and pissed myself. <laughs> that reminds me of Pete's show. <laughs> when he gets locked out and he's sleeping in a barn. 
And he goes, to, he goes to, oh, where were you last night? He goes, where was I? I got locked out. I slept in a fucking barn. I pissed on my legs to keep my fucking legs warm. That's where I was last night. <laughs> that, fe- yeah. that feeling of getting locked out, though, is the worst, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do it with, like, my car. I don't understand how people back in the day locked their keys in their car. Because back in the day, they it, just it locked automatically, in it. So how we have to do the because they would they it was like a key term, wasn't it? In fact, I don't know how they did it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. That's what I mean because you used to have to. Obviously, people are going to be sitting there going, "These fucking millennials, <laughs> how could you not figure this out?" <laughs> yeah, but like back in the day, you put the key in the door, you unlocked it. And you opened it up, and then to leave it, you had to put the key in the door and lock it. So how are the you locking your keys in the in the car? I remember my mum doing it. I remember crying in the fucking mall car park because mum was like, "I've locked the keys in the car, you fucking little bastard." <laughs> I don't know. Is it like you get out, close the door, and it locks? It must have. It must. Have, it must have like some kind of automatic locking system or something. Because I remember back in the day. Do you remember the old like? Uh, Locking things that go over the steering wheel. I used to love putting that on my granddad's Oh, car. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you used to put out the huge yellow I see bar. A guy, and then you, <laughs> on the night out, down, yeah, I see a guy get absolutely mullered with one of them, absolutely battered with one of them uh, <laughs> steering wheel locks, then big orange bars or big yellow bars that you'd put yeah. over your steering wheel. This guy was like, yeah, you want to see what happens? You want to see what happens? We're all standing outside the front of the pub having a smoke these two geezers are kicking off and then uh all of a sudden this geezer comes running around the corner like fucking a bat out of hell yeah with this big yellow what we thought was a bat at the time and he just licked yeah. the guy straight in the face <laughs> fucking... <laughs> <laughs> and he went down like a ton of shit and um i was just like oh okay um he's gonna die tonight <laughs> <laughs> Those things were lethal, man. Like, I always heavy, remember them well. being really yeah. heavy. But yeah, you had to get the... That's so stressful back in the day, man. You had to get in your car, you get the little key, and put it in, and unlock it, throw it in the back seat, and if there's someone sitting there, you're knocking their legs mm. with it, put it on the back seat floor, and then you got to get going again. I couldn't handle it. There used that to be a, a padlock that you could put on the pedal as well. Wasn't it, wasn't it like a double? Like it, it went down, locked in, and then it went up to the steering wheel. Yeah, you could do that, yeah. Or it come through the steering wheel and locked in. I don't know why we're talking about this. When we we're went on a real tangent, yeah. <laughs> there was something I was going to go back to, but I can't remember what I was going to do a call back to. I don't ever remember me and you ever doing pranks on each other when we were in the... In oh, the I, I was a miserable bastard, man. Like some, some of the times I, like... I remember coming in uh, Sarah and Charlotte, because obviously Charlotte's my, now my wife, and Sarah... Uh, was our manager, but um, Charlotte's best friend at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I always had, me and Charlotte never worked well together, especially because she was higher up than me. Yeah. And then I'd come in and I did majority late shift. So I'd always be like coming in and deliveries there for me and I've got a whole fucking full day of bullshit going on. And I'd be in a bad mood because yeah. I'd be like, they haven't done enough this morning. And I come in and there was no cages in the warehouse. And I was like, what's going on here? There's nothing. And there's a huge box. And there was like, oh, delivery's not turned up yet. It's coming about seven o'clock, which you knew, you as you know, Dan, that's a fucking nightmare. You're going to have yeah, about yeah. 14, 15 cages turn up at 7 p.m. And you've got to get them done by 10, plus all the other shit you've got to get done. Yeah. But there's this huge box here, which looks like uh, like a box that they had like a DVD stand in. And there was like, if you could just sort that DVD stand out and take that out, but you, you it's just going to have to be you because no one's coming in till like five o'clock. And I'm mm-hmm. just looking at it and I'm thinking, this is the fucking worst day of my life. And I, I was just thinking, all I could think about was that delivery. I didn't give a shit about the stand. The stand, I, I couldn't yeah. have done anything with the stand. And then I went out, straight out, uh, opened up the back shutters like I used to do and had to smoke. And I was standing there angrily looking at the box for fucking about half an hour. 
<laughs> and then as I walked past back the box, yeah, Charlotte was inside the box, jumped out at me, and I nearly punched her in the fucking face. <laughs> this was before we even got together. And, then literally, and then everyone come running out into the warehouse and was like laughing at me. And I was like, fucking hell, you just got me bad. Because I was in such a bad mood. And that like brought me straight back down to earth, innit? Mate, I'm surprised you weren't kicking the fuck out of that box. Could you imagine it? Mate, like... <laughs> Shouts inside, you're kicking Do you remember out. when they used to give me things in the evening to do? Like all the POS stuff. And I just used to throw it straight across the warehouse and just be like, fuck this. Fuck that. Oh, I used to hate all that fucking... I couldn't go back to it, man. Like... Factory work sucks, and the people can be dickheads and lazy in that, but I'll never go back to fucking retail. You man. earn more money, you deal with no customers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, don't get me wrong, if I have to go back, I will, for money reasons. But up until that point, I'm happy where I am, and I'm not going to be trying to pursue that again. Like, dealing with the general public, I don't know whether it would be the same in America, but dealing, dealing with the general public in the UK... You just realise how many drips there are in this world, isn't it? How many idiots we've got in this world. Oh, mate, I don't even fucking... And how they function. No. Yeah, I know. But like I said, I'm the same. When when you when you cross that threshold of the, the doors, your common sense just comes out your <laughs> ass and it doesn't go back in until you come out again. You know I mean, I do, I do it all the time. Do you remember that one woman we worked with? Too. I won't mention her name just in case it somehow gets back to. I don't even know if she's still alive, but so now I've got to try and remember who it is. <clears throat> you and the, what, she used to attack the till. She used to literally hit it that hard it turned the the screen around on the customer. Did she work with us on the Sunday, on the Wednesday evening? Oh mate, yeah, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, I'm sure you said you saw her and she still works there. No, that was about a year ago, and she was looking frail as oh, fuck. Okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I remember I trained her on her first day and I was just like thinking this person's just like she's a complete idiot yeah mm -hmm. and there used to be like the button for like calling the customer over to the till and there used to be a panic button for when we have an armed robbery yeah mm -hmm. and it would be like come to till number one please and instead, instead of oh, pressing yeah. that, she pressed the arm response button. She did it six times in a month, Dan, in her first, in the first <laughs> month. Oh yeah, because didn't they take us? Yeah, off they the, took uh... us off the armed response unit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For like a good couple yeah. of months to make sure we weren't. There was you. like you're commit, you're you're wasting police time and all this shit. And I was just like, mate, if she's reached this age and she's unteachable. Didn't she used to tell us that she was like um, really good with numbers or something? I can't remember yeah. what it was. And I was thinking, no, you ain't. No, you ain't. And her fucking <laughs> husband used to, like, when we used to shut down the shutters at the end of the night, her husband used to lurk in the doorway on the other side of the fucking road. And then, like, as she comes walking across the road, he just bursts out of, like, the fucking, like, uh, darkness, <laughs> like Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, look at them two ferrets walking up the road, man. He used to fuck. Oh, mate. No, I don't like going back to those <laughs> days, man. I'll stick where I am. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. Oh, man. I am um, going off top of you again. Have you ever seen them weighted blankets you can get? Weighted blankets? Yeah, yeah. So I was. I've seen loads of people doing it. And then that girl that I'm sleeping with, she has a weighted. Um, I have to think of a, something to call her because I feel really like I keep calling her the girl I'm sleeping with is disrespectful. The girl you're seeing. Girl I'm seeing, yeah. The lady. Um, yeah, she's got a weighted quilt cover. Yeah, so she's got a weighted blanket. So I was like, oh, so I was doing some research and I found out that a uh, weighted blanket's good for people that um, have like anxiety, ADHD, autism, stuff like that makes them feel secure it's called something like um pressure something or something something or other so i bought really? one it's got to be 10 percent of your body weight so 
if it was something like nine ninety five kilograms plus, so I'm about one hundred and one kilograms. My blanket's nine kilograms. It's heavy. Right. It's he- well, it's, you know what I mean? Is that not, is that not is that what do you mean like blanket like duvet that you sleep with? So you can get I I've specifically got a blanket because it's right because I like Udi's and they do a one. Yeah. They were doing like an offer, so I got it from them. But like I said, she has a quilt cover, like a actual quilt, like a duvet quilt. Yeah, that's weighted. But it's weird. Like this one's filled with like. Um, I'm sure it said like glass beads or something. So I put it on, and it's like imagine the feeling of wet clothes that stick to your skin. Because obviously it's weighted, isn't it? So you put the blanket on it, it just goes boom, and it's and it's it's really weird, like a second skin. But I tell you, oh, I um, I uh, I check. I've got like a sleep thing with my Google. It tracks my sleeping. Yeah, and um. Normally it's like light, deep REM sleep, like like a fucking like I'm having a heart attack through the night because I'm constantly yeah. like moving about and it's very stuff erratic. Like, yeah, yeah, because I have like restless leg and ADHD stuff. But last night I only turned over twice. It's like the most sort of like static I've seen my sleep mm. in ages. I'm still snoring because I've got the sleep up now. Um, yeah, my hay fever obviously at the minute is doing my nutting. Yeah, yeah. I had that as soon as I landed. Yeah, yeah. But, like, underneath my eyes were getting, like, really black. And, like, I looked at this morning and they looked really like I'd slept. So, mm. I'm, it's, but it's the first night, you know what I mean? Like, it might... With ADHD, everything's a fad. But, you know, it's it's really good. It's worth trying because, like, with me, I wouldn't be able to do that because I feel like panicky under my fucking duvet let alone under something that's weighted on top of me yeah yeah I'd be like feeling like I'm being suffocated but if it's actually keeping you still and keeping you feeling that might actually be worth doing because I'm very much the same I'm very restless in my sleep yeah 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 it's weird to well they say that if you're a side sleeper in that you can get it like a bit lighter it's hard to uh, know whether or not to do it without because obviously it cost me sixty nine pound, and that was with the discount. You know what I mean? Because it was supposed yeah. to be like a hundred, but it was they were doing a summertime discount. So you know, if you get it and you're like, "This ain't for me," you got, there's no way of testing it or anything like that. You've then got it. No, you got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. But it definitely anything to me. do with beds takes a piss, doesn't it? Yeah, price wise. Yeah, that fucking sleep apnea machine that they expect me to use, which is a big pile of shit, is like six hundred pound. Fucking hell, man! Yeah. Did you pay for that? Or did no, they no, they pay for it. I was about to say, yeah. Does it work? No, no. But that's because um, they don't want to listen, right? Like, because of the ADHD. You get, have you got a like a good mattress? Because I've realised since I've this is going to be sound like the fucking most boring conversation ever. But <laughs> it's alright. It's at the end. Since, if anyone makes it, yeah, this true. Far, People are probably like oh, if they made it this far. <laughs> I'm going to sit and listen. <laughs> I got a new mattress about six, seven months ago. We paid a lot of money for it. And to like uh, the amount of money that I don't want to spend on anything kind of money. Mm-hmm. And I was pissed off getting it. But I was getting such like bad sleep that I thought something needs to change. Changed our pillows about 12 times before that. And nothing was changing. And we got this like decent, decent... Uh, mattress and it made such a big difference man like literally when i measure my sleep in the night i move around so much less i still kick out i do this weird kicking out thing yeah rest of it's like charlotte's like <laughs> sometimes at like three in the morning she thinks that i'm just like gonna boot her <laughs> in the bed. i've done that before man <laughs> fucking slapped her right in the face <laughs> <laughs> but you should try um i got because uh, obviously me and you both have allergies i got yeah. some anti-allergy stuff from next like pillows and duvet covers All right. and they're really good as well like immediately you can feel the difference for like you're breathing yeah it's fucking crazy man like when you're younger i could sleep I've, i have slept in bathtubs i've slept on floors i slept in boots mate yeah now if i like when i slept down at yours it didn't feel as good as being in my own bed now. And I'm like, fuck me, man. I can't. 
I can't do this anymore. To be fair, you, you had the uncomfortable bed this time. No, but I mean in general, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally it wouldn't make a difference, but I'm like, fuck, I need a... I need to go home. <laughs> I get I get like that myself. Like sometimes if I'm all going out on the piss in Luton, which I live in the next town from Luton for anyone listening, if I go out on the piss in Luton, which is where all my friends are and my family is, then I normally would stay at my mum's. Mm-hmm. But the last few times that I've gone out with like workmates, I've decided not to stay at mum's because I just want to have my own bed. Yeah, yeah. So I've paid that extra 20 quid in an Uber or whatever just to go home. Man, you're lucky you get Uber because when we were at that restaurant, so we got a taxi there because I wanted yeah. to have a drink. Mm. And I was like, oh, should we just ring the same taxi company that dropped us off? And she's like, yeah. So she rings them and they just go, nah, put the phone down. <laughs> and she goes, they said no. And I'm like, what do you mean they said no? Because we don't have Uber in <laughs> They said five. no to custom. Yeah, they said no. They didn't want to drive out. So I had to go ask. And luckily, because it's a local pub, I was like, oh, do you have a local taxi service you use? And she goes, yeah, I'll give them a call. So she phoned them for us? Yeah, that that's brilliant. the way to go. We had to do that in Devon. Because like, when we got down to Devon for uh, Charlotte's granddad's funeral, we were there for about four or five days. Mm-hmm. And Devon's like pretty similar to uh, Scotland in the way that everything's very spread apart and there's not any like Uber or Deliveroo or any like city things that I'm used to. And um, uh, when we were down there, we we were staying just outside the town. So you could get Deliveroo and stuff like that in the town. Mm -hmm. But we were staying at some golf resort outside outside in the town. And... um, we come down to them in the morning, in the afternoon, just before we were going to go out for a meal, and was like, because we tried Uber and Uber wasn't picking up anything, so we went down and asked in the reception. She was like, "Oh, we need forty-eight hours. Uh, what's it called? Forty-eight hours notice for a taxi." <laughs> and I was like, "What do you mean forty-eight? I've only been here fucking twelve hours." And she was like, "Forty-eight hours notice." So I was like, "So what? You want me to call you?" When I'm still working two days ago. <laughs> and she was like, that's just the policy. And I was like, well, where's there a local taxi firm? And she was like, no. Well, how do I know where I'm like, going to be in not... two days? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, obviously, we... Because, obviously, we clocked that. In the next two days was the funeral. And I was like, I'm not fucking driving to the funeral. Because you know what I'm like. And I was like, right. What we'll do... We'll book a taxi now for 12 o'clock on that day and a taxi for like midnight on that day yeah to come back and then she's like oh you can't book two taxis in one day and I was just looking at her <laughs> I was just like are you being fucking serious right now <laughs> what is there only one geezer in a car what, like what the fuck are you talking about silly bitch that's crazy man <laughs> oh well I feel much better after our counselling session this week Jamie I appreciate that. I'm not paying you again, but I appreciate it. <laughs> you pay me in tears, Dan. In tears. <laughs> yeah, because you miss me so much. That's what it is. Now you're oh, back man. home. <laughs> we need to do... We, it's one of the things that has become like a need in my week, I think. Because last week, obviously I was away. But before that, we had a whole week of not doing it. And it was like... There was something missing. Yeah, something that's missing what I mean. Life. Today I was I was really fucking moody. Like everyone was mm. setting me off, and I'm like, I need to get on a fucking podcast. And the fact that people listen to our counselor sessions makes me happy. Yeah, because we're fucking... we're essentially just giving the travel therapy, and other people listening to and it. Everyone's <laughs> listening to it. Yeah, yeah, you're really good friends. Yeah, because he listens to my bullshit every fucking time I speak to. Him. <laughs> two guys, two guys moaning at each other, yeah. which is why we've got no hope <laughs> yeah. and no cup. Just for, the, just for the reference at the beginning there, that was a joke. I'm not... <laughs> but, um, I almost didn't clock that joke. Someone said it to me at work and I was like, that's pretty funny, I have to use it. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to get some sleep, man. I got Friday tomorrow. So, last day. Let's do this. Thanks again to everyone that's uh, written in lately. 
Um, it's really given me and Dan a boost on uh, recording. And if anyone else wants to write in, um, it's uh, two, spelt T W O, not the number. Men, I forgot what the fucking things. <laughs> no cup. <laughs> no cup. No. <laughs> T W O, men, no hope at gmail dot com. It's so simple. I don't know why I forget it every time. Anyway, cheers, guys. Thanks very much, guys. Till next week. Thank you.